write great content to get ranked on Google. SEO is easy, right? Well, if that advice isn't working for you and you want to get an edge on the competition, it might help to have a little bit of data to provide some advice. In this video, I'm gonna tell you about similar content, a suite of tools that helps you decide what content you should write about and then how you can optimize it to have the best chance of ranking on Google. The best part, it's available as a lifetime deal over at AppSumo. Stay tuned. What's up LTD addicts? In this video, we're gonna be looking at the six main features of similar content. I'll tell you what I like about it and what I don't like so you can decide if it's a good fit for your business. Now, before we dig into the tool, let's go have a look at the offer from AppSumo. This deal is a little bit more expensive than the typical $49 offering from AppSumo, but the features that it offers are often hundreds of dollars a month from other providers. So if it works well, it is a total no brainer for anyone out there who writes content for websites. 79 bucks gets you in the door for a single code and you can stack up to five codes to increase account limits. Now let's talk about what those limits are. Each code is gonna give you 100 topic difficulty searches and that'll let you research how competitive a topic is. You'll also be able to optimize 10 articles per day per code, as well as rewrite 10 articles per day using their content spinner. We'll take a look at what content spinning is in a little bit later uh, in this video. So if that concept is new to you, hang with me. Now, in addition to the limits on the number of articles that you can optimize, there is also a limit on the length of the articles. The content rewriter has a limit of 1,000 words per code for each article. So if you wanna spin a 3,000 word article, of course, you're gonna need three codes. The content optimizer, on the other hand, has a hard limit of 10,000 words per article, regardless of how many codes you stack. I think that's just a software limitation. It doesn't go over 10,000 words. So if you want to get your whole team on the platform, you might be a little bit bummed to find out that the deal caps out at two users. It doesn't scale with each code that you purchase like the other limitations do. At least they give you the second user at only two codes. So if you need two users, you can get two codes and be good with it. So that's the deal. And before we look into the software, I do want to disclose one other thing. The founder of Similar Content approached me via Facebook. He gave me an account uh, so I could review it and, and make this video. I haven't been paid or compensated in any way for this review other than getting access to the tool. Now, before we dig in too deep, I want to also tell you that the founder was pretty upfront in admitting to me that the UI and the UX has some drawbacks. And I agree. It's a little bit rough around the edges to put it politely. So we're gonna see that in the tool in a second here, but I do want to note up front that they have a UI update coming. They have a public Trello board and it has the date of December 15th for that user experience upgrade. Hopefully it's a good one. So that said, that was a mouthful. Does this thing work? Let's get to it. There are six main tools and you can see them on the dashboard. I actually really appreciate the fact that they're clearly labeled with the functionality each tool provides and they do this in pretty simple terms. So here are all six tools. Topic difficulty. This tool lets you determine what you should write about and how hard it will be to rank for the keyword you have in mind. Content Optimizer. This tool helps you increase the relevancy of your content that you've already written so that you can rank higher on Google. Keyword Brainstorming. This is essentially a Google Keyword Planner uh, without all of the cost per click stuff mixed in. So this is about finding opportunities for organic search. Micro Niche Finder. This is to help you find niches that have little or no competition. Content Rewriter. This is the article spinner that I was mentioning earlier, and we'll take a look at how that works in great detail coming right up. Then the last topic is called Today's Fresh Keywords, and this is all about finding not the latest produce, but the traffic that is already being generated for a particular keyword, so maybe you can hop aboard that wave and get some traffic into your site. All right, let's take a deeper look at the Content Difficulty Tool. This is the search bar that you see across the top of the screen. So the idea here is if you wanna find out how competitive a keyword is, just go ahead and enter it into the search field. Much like Google, it's gonna suggest other keywords so you can see uh, you know, some similar searches. Here it auto-completes briefcase pro, briefcase review, and so forth. Now I just wanna search for AppSumo briefcase as there are some new features related to briefcase and I wanna write an article about it. After hitting return, the analysis took about 50 seconds before it produced any results, so the speed could definitely be improved on this part of the application. In the results screen, you see a main metric, and that is really what's gonna you know, give you the ballpark of whether is this gonna be worth your time to write an article. So the topic difficulty is given in a score of one to 100, and my search for AppSumo briefcase received a score of 42.7. 
Similar content notes that the keyword is of moderate difficulty and it will require backlinks to rank. These are some pretty helpful observations. The next box over highlights maybe some of those UI issues that we were talking about at the beginning of the review. It's called higher score achieved. Now, I think this is really just a language barrier, but what it's really referring to is the highest relevancy score that a competing article has already received. There's really no way to deduce what that means without actually digging a little bit deeper into the tool, but that's what we're talking about. The results page will also show you a graphic with the top 10 ranking articles with their relevancy score. We can see that the top results are related to AppSumo, Briefcase. Uh, so these are you know directly coming from AppSumo.com or Briefcase itself with reviews coming later in the results. So the AppSumo content actually has lower relevancy scores than the reviews. So why do they rank higher? Well, obviously it's because Apps AppSumo has a higher relevance to the overall search, and it's going to have a higher domain authority than someone who's just writing a review about the platform. So you're going to write reviews. you got to have some really, really relevant content. Next in similar content, it shows us a field called to optimize, which are keywords they suggest the top sites should include to make their content more relevant. We can see that the phrase AppSumo is included only in 7% of titles that are ranking. So there are categories for to optimize related to titles, but it also goes through the descriptions, synonyms, related keywords, sentiments, concepts, and even entities. Now entities is a little bit interesting because it pulls in data about who it thinks the article is related to. How accurate is it? Well, in some cases it provided useful information like AppSumo is a company and Noah Kagan is related to AppSumo. But in other cases, it was pretty irrelevant, including things like Netflix, Apple, Milwaukee. Now everyone knows that AppSumo is based out of Austin. In the Google SERP analysis section, we can see the search engine results for the top 10 listings with the content relevancy score displayed alongside it. Now we can see if the URL, title, or description are using any of the two optimized keywords that we discussed a moment ago. And for this particular keyword, only the very last result received any green check marks at all. So, the topic difficulty tool is pretty useful, but I don't expect it to uncover particularly astonishing information here. I could likely use some common sense and diligence to do this recon work manually, but I do like that the tool will do it for me and give me a decent summary in minutes rather than probably a half hour to an hour of doing research. So before we move on to the content optimization tool, the next tool, I just want to point out one other little glitch or UI issue that I noticed, and that is that I can't return to the data with a single click. So let's say I move on in the application and I want to come back to this search. Well, the search box does have a history and a recent tab, but neither allow you to just click on the search and return to your data without doing the search all over again. So this is something that is easy to fix, and I do hope they do that as part of their upcoming user experience experience upgrade. Next up, let's talk about the content optimization tool that lets you write in or paste your content and then analyzes relevancy with a single click. And if you've already published your article, don't worry, you can paste in the URL and it will just pull in the text. Note that in order to get the analysis of the content, you still have to hit the purple analyze button at the bottom of the screen, and that will be covered by the notification that you just successfully pulled in the content from your URL. So this caused me to scratch my head for a minute, another UI glitch, but again, a simple fix. So here we'll see single keywords that might be missing from your content. You could have also used them too infrequently or maybe even used them too much. In the not found tab, I can see that I should have included business, growth, or other keywords like that to beef up my relevancy score from a paltry 39.86 closer to the recommended 72. In the low tab, I can see keywords that were underused. I mentioned AppSumo only 26 times and they recommend using it 62. Good is where you've actually succeeded. It shows keywords that were used in an appropriate amount. And the extremely tab shows overused keywords. Again, I probably like to see them change a little bit of the language there. Extremely isn't very clear to me as what they're asking or telling me to do. This tool will of course also give you a word count of your article, as well as several other recommendations like multi-word keywords. We just looked at single a second ago. Questions that you might want to ask in the article. Now, note that it didn't find any questions in my briefcase search. So just know that 
that every article is not going to have questions generated for you. It's also going to show you what category it thinks that Google will want to see your data in. So if you're using things like breadcrumbs on your website, you might want to organize according to these expectations. Now, note here, it did suggest I put this article in the financial news category, which is a little bit interesting. So I'm not sure whether the tool is off here or maybe my article is that bad and it genuinely can't, uh, genuinely can't figure out what my topic should be. The next section is the keyword ranking predictor, and that will show you what keywords you have the best shot of ranking for. It looks like my article is going to rank for much value. Ooh, I got much work to do there. Finally, there is a concept section which talks about the general concepts it thinks your article is about. So apparently I'm getting confused with school lunch. Man, either this article is really bad or the tool isn't quite understanding what I'm writing about. And last, there is a tab for entities, which is just like we saw in the keyword research that we covered earlier in this video. So overall, I'd say that the content optimization tool is giving me some pretty good theories for why my briefcase article isn't ranking. And if I updated everything to meet the target score, would I rank? Well, Unfortunately, only time will tell, and I don't have a time machine or any way to delay this review a few weeks to see if my ranking improves, but I feel confident that I've at least got some good ideas about how I can improve the article from using the tool. Let's move on to the keyword brainstorming tool. Now, similar content says that this tool will help you find topics that you have an opportunity to rank for organically. And they strip out all of the cost per click metrics that you'd normally find in the Google Keyword Planner so you can just focus on organic search. Now, when I searched for briefcase AppSumo, I only received two results. I had a little bit better luck searching for AppSumo by itself, but what we're looking for is keywords that have a high frequency, meaning that they're being searched for a lot and none of the keywords that it brought back had a very high frequency, so maybe it's not worth my time to investigate writing a AppSumo article, or maybe the frequency threshold is just a little bit too harsh for this type of content. Now, this information is similar to what you'd find using Google's Keyword Planner, but you do have to have a Google Ads account to see that data, and of course, creating a Google Ads account is free, but that might be a hurdle some people don't want to go through to get some information. Now, overall, I'd mark this feature as a nice to have, but it's certainly not a game changer. Next up, let's talk about the micro niche finder. The goal here is similar to the keyword brainstorming tool in that it's gonna take a more general keyword and give you a micro niche inside of that more broad category. Now, I found that I had to start very broad to get any information here. When I searched for business software, no results were found. So I switched to just software, and then I was given a list of several categories to choose from, like graphic design and illustration software. When I clicked into that micro niche, it gave me a list of questions asked by customers in that niche. Now, this could be helpful to serve as a launching point for an article. However, no frequency data was pulled in, which left me a little bit uncertain as to just how many people would actually be searching for an article if I were to answer a question here. I also found it annoying that there was no back button. So once I drilled down into a micro niche, there was no way for me to go back without just performing the search again. They're very similar to that annoying quirk we talked about earlier. The content rewriter is a bit of an odd choice to include in this suite. The tool is doing something that is a decade old practice of spinning content so that it is unique. Now, it's not really unique. It simply has some words shuffled around, removed or replaced. I pasted a few lines from the AppSumo deal page for similar content, and I got pretty much the same thing out. Oddly enough, it started with one line with a comma, so this is definitely not a super sophisticated tool. Content spinning is a very spammy tactic, and Google is very sophisticated today. It's unlikely to reward an article that just spins the words around, twists them around, and replaces words with synonyms. Just write original good content. The final tool is called Today's Fresh Keywords. The idea here is that you can find top search terms in your region and then write an article to get some traffic in a hurry. Now, you just enter your keyword in and hit search. That's all there is to it. You get 20 trending keywords and then you can click on them to look up their topic difficulty. Now, these results are kind of interesting to me, but my first thought was, hey, Google Trends. Sure enough, a lot of the data on Google Trends was the same as what I found on similar content, and obviously Google Trends is totally free. No account necessary other than probably just a regular old Google account. So 
Bottom line, similar content is an interesting tool. It's more of a convenience than it is providing any information that you can't gleam through other sources with enough time and effort and patience to go through the search results pages. Although that could be said for most search engine optimization tools. So that said, I think it'll be interesting to see how the platform grows and becomes a bit more sophisticated. So what is similar content not? a text metrics or copyrightly replacement. If you have either of those previous app sumo deals, you could still consider similar content. They specialize in similar niches and they overlap a little bit, but there are enough unique features in both that I think you'll still find it useful. In my opinion, text metrics is great. I use it all the time. The reading tools and similar content aren't even close to being on the same page, but they're really not trying to be. Similar content seems like a convenient place to brainstorm content ideas and then double check the relevance after you publish. Now, there's no way to sync your articles to a WordPress site, and there isn't even a way to save searches or in a folder or keep your ideas organized. So those are some things that I'd love to see in the future. But there are a few things that bug me a little bit more than that. There is this little widget on the side of the screen, and when you click on it, there is a usage meter that shows you how much you've used the tool against the limitations of your plan but the usage meter uses different names than the dashboard. So on the dashboard, it's called topic difficulty, but in the usage meter, it's called keyword ranking. This was quite annoying to me, maybe more than necessary, but I have a hard time remembering exactly what each feature is called in the first place. So if they start changing the names, I'm definitely gonna get confused. Next, when you load up the main dashboard or really any of the page settings, this really obnoxious chime plays. Add this together with the other quirks and language barriers I've mentioned throughout this review, and it becomes clear that similar content has a ways to go until it's a sophisticated product. But when I weigh that against how much other tools like this cost, and the founder literally said to me in his first statement that they are going to fix the UI, I can't help to be a bit optimistic about the fate of the tool. So. I would play it conservative, not stack this one. You don't want to have another link cheetah on your hands, but if you're writing content or doing SEO, this isn't a bad tool to have in your tool belt if you can afford it. Similar content gets a score of 6.8 out of 10. It's nice to have, but definitely not a need to have. It's a little bit of an investment, hoping that it pays off in the future. If you enjoy this review and you want to support the channel, please click on the link in the description before making a purchase at AppSumo. That is our affiliate link and it provides us a small commission when you purchase, but it doesn't cost you anything extra. If you love digital marketing and productivity software, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We have a lot more great lifetime deal reviews coming out later this week. Look for a review of project management tool Freedcamp coming up soon. If you like the video, make sure you hit like and don't forget to leave me a comment down below. What do you think of similar content? Was I too easy on it? Are you going to pick this one up or are you going to let it wait to grow up a little bit? Let me know and thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next review.